There are goods and bads in this world. Both are really important in order to identify and consider something as good or bad. The yin and yang says something similar and really changes the way we look at the whole universe and just the life. Yin and yang is a Chinese philosophical concept that describes opposite but interconnected forces. In Chinese cosmology, the universe creates itself out of a primary chaos of material energy, organized into the cycles of yin and yang and formed into objects and lives. The yin and yang symbol. You can see two parts, with black representing yin and white representing yang. There are dots in both yin and yang in opposite or vice versa color. Yin, Chinese for female or moon, represents femininity, passivity, and the earth. Yang represents light, masculinity, activity, and the heavens. The balance of yin and yang were seen to influence health and order within an individual, society, and the entire universe. The nature of yin-yang lies in the interchange and interplay of the two components. The alternation of day and night is just such an example. There cannot be a shadow without light. There can't be a winner without a loser. There can't be a gain without a pain. And vice versa. The balance of yin and yang is really important. All the information whatsoever can be translated into terms of yang and yin. Alan Watts. The concept of yin and yang lies at the basis of Taoist philosophy. It makes a lot of appearances in popular and consumer culture, representing things like balance and inner peace. But the profundity of yin and yang goes way beyond that. When we really get this mysterious philosophy, it may change your view on the universe forever. In the ancient masterpiece written by Lao Tzu, called the Tao Te Ching, we can see that he talks about the feminine or the great mother, being the mysterious, receptive and passive force, represented by the black part of the yin and yang symbol, and then the masculine being the active force, that is basically more visible and prominent, represented by the white part. Now, this isn't meant to be sexist. The word feminine is a way to describe the characteristics of one opposite, while the masculine describes the other. Men and women both possess yin and yang characteristics. Which, moreover, when we look at the yin and yang symbol, we see a black dot in the white area, and a white dot in the black area, representing the idea that both the feminine and the masculine carry the seed of one another. By the way, it's really important to know that there are no absolutes. What is yin or yang really depends on the situation. Here is what Lao Tzu wrote in Chapter 2 of the Tao Te Ching. Being and non-being produce each other. Difficult and easy complement each other. Long and short define each other. High and low oppose each other. Fore and aft follow each other. Each example given has a yin and yang element in it. Both yin and yang complement each other. So, if we look at the verses from the Tao Te Ching, we can say that long is considered yang. While, short is considered yin. Being is considered yang. While, non-being is considered yin. One cannot exist without one another. Whether one is yin or yang depends on the relationship between the two. Now, while the functionality of the yang seems obvious, the value of the yin is often overlooked. Yet, it contains great power. A good example can be the storage room in your house. Only because there was a room empty, you were able to store your things in it. If the room wasn't empty or wasn't capable of storing your things, you wouldn't have had a room to store your things. This scenario may often be overlooked, but it plays a vital role in most cases. Something that doesn't exist becomes the reason for something to exist in this universe. If we look at emptiness in this way, we see that it's the vital part of everything we do. Without an open mind, free and empty enough to learn something, we won't be able to learn something new. The next time you think your failures were nothing but a mess, remember this. The failure is the very reason. You want to correct your mistakes and improve yourself. And this is the very aspect that leads to success. Another aspect of yin is its passivity. Society looks down on passivity. It's all about being proactive, getting results, going from point A to point B and action over cessation. Because of this, we generally lack respect for passive element of life. This is strange when we think about this, since passivity is essential for every form of accomplishment. A key characteristic of yin is the receptiveness, and because of its receptiveness, it attracts. We see this dynamic everywhere in nature. Example, flowers waiting to be pollinated by insects. Lao Tzu also describes yin as soft, as he compares it to water in relation to hard rock, which is the yang aspect in relation to the water. The Grand Canyon is proof that water overcomes the hard, without striving. On the other hand, yin is nowhere without yang. For example, warmth and light are necessary for life. The emptiness only becomes useful when there is something built around it. Flowers can only be pollinated if the insects actively approach it and do what they had to do. From the flower's pollination to the atom, where we encounter a positively charged core surrounded by negatively charged electrons. The yin and yang pattern is the essence of binary code that solely consists of ones and zeros. As philosopher Alan Watts puts it, you could say that all your perceptions, in all their variety and all their color, are made of a vast composite of little yeses and little noes. Looking at a complementary nature of yin and yang, we can say that the both feminine and masculine 
keep each other in check. When one becomes too dominant, the other will grow. Until it becomes dominant, then the other side will grow. Lao Tzu wrote that, no movement is possible. If an opposite movement hasn't occurred before it, if you want something to return to the source, you must first allow it to spread out. If you want something to weaken, you must first allow it to become strong. If you want something to be removed, first you have to allow it to flourish. If you want to possess something, you must first give it away. The yin and yang complement each other, teach each other, support each other and regulate each other and transform each other. The non-doing or effortless action also called Wu Wai by the Taoists is a practice that actually harvests the both power of yin and yang. The trick is knowing when to act and when not to. So our actions won't be strenuous, but more in a flow state. In many cases, there is no need to act. An over-enthusiastic salesman scares away potential clients. Many problems aren't a problem. It becomes a problem only when you think it's problematic, even if they are really a problem. Mostly problems solve themselves. That is, every problem has a solution for itself. Furthermore, acting oftentimes only worsens the situation. By backing off we enter the yin state. The key is knowing when to back off and when not to. Too much passivity can be as bad as too little. No matter what you do, there will always be a dark and light side to everything. Because without the opposites, there's nothing to support your position in the hierarchy. With the invaluable knowledge that there can't be one without the other, we might want to be more thankful to that nasty co-worker, that guy who cuts us off in the traffic, those barbaric people in other countries, with different culture and belief. Because thanks to them, you are getting to know who you are, with a better clarity towards everything, and a reason to be grateful to yourself. Thank you for watching.